Hello, this is Breuer and welcome to a brand new series that I'm going to be calling Civilization 6 A to Z, where I'll be going through each of the civilizations one by one and providing thoughts, strategy, and rankings. Today we're going to be starting with America, which is a very strong late game civilization with an emphasis on a cultural victory. They're also one of only four civilizations that gets two unique units. America's leader is Theodore Roosevelt, and he gets three key bonuses. His first bonus is that units receive plus five combat strength on their home continent. And what this really means for you is that you're going to be able to conquer your continent and keep it. So that's going to be very, very good for the entire game. His other bonus is you get plus one appeal to all tiles in a city with a national park can be a bit limited and random because you can't guarantee if or where you can have a park, but if you can get one, it is a very strong bonus. Appeal makes both seaside resorts and parks better, as well as neighborhoods. His last bonus is the Rough Rider Unique Unit. It's a heavy cavalry unit, but it cannot be promoted up to, so you can't pre-build the lower units and, and push the XP uh, gains up to that. It has 5 movement speed and 67 melee strength baseline. Uh, it also only has a 2 gold maintenance, and don't underestimate how good this can be. If you have about half dozen of these Rough Riders, you're saving yourself about 20 gold per turn, because most of the other units of this era are around the 5 to 6 gold mark. It is effectively a tank alternate, but an era earlier. It is not a replacement for the tank though, because you can still continue to make tanks as America. Tanks do have 80 strength, but they also need oil to be produced. Um, it's very similar in stats to the Cossack from Russia, which is a light cavalry unit, but otherwise they're almost identical in, in stats. It does upgrade to the modern armor instead of tanks, uh, which does mean you're going to be keeping this around for a while. But to help you with that, you do get plus 10 combat strength when fighting on hills. So with that, that brings their melee strength up to 77 compared to the tanks 80. So yeah, it's a little hit or miss on whether you can fight in hills, but at least it gets them a chance to be close to tanks. They do have the other option or other bonus of earning culture from kills on its capital's continent. Now, some estimates I saw from looking online is it's probably about half the strength of the unit that you kill, that much culture that you get back, which isn't like a ton, but it's something. And if you're pushing for that culture victory, every little bit can help. Also, the Rough Rider requires no bonus resources, so you're going to be able to build a lot of these even if you don't have access to oil or, or other things. The overall scores for the bonuses that Theodore Roosevelt gives you are, I would give Domination a 10 out of 10. I mean, the combination of the plus five combat strength on your home continent for the entire game, plus an extra unique unit on top of everything else, that's pretty solid, to be perfectly honest. Uh, science, I'm going to give it a flat zero. There's, there's nothing here that's going to help your science. Culture, I'm going to give it an eight, but with a little bit of asterisk there, because it really depends on getting good locations for your resorts and parks. If you do get those, it's a very, very solid bonus that Theodore Roosevelt gives you. And then religion, you're also going to get a zero here. There's just nothing here for your religion either. America's unique civilization ability is called Founding Fathers. Previously, before Rise and Fall, government legacy bonuses would accumulate in half the usual number of turns. Currently, with the Rise and Fall uh, expansion, all Diplo policy slots in the government are converted to wildcard slots. The legacy bonuses were good, but limited because you couldn't change them very often. With the Rise and Fall bonus, however, the wildcard slots are very flexible can help you with any focus and can change frequently. Overall, I feel like this was a good change for America and it really helps them out a lot. The scores that I would give this bonus are really sixes all across the board. Domination, science, culture, and religion because you have a lot of flexibility of what you can put in those wildcard slots. I mean, it's not huge bonus, but it's a solid, solid bonus there. America's unique unit is the P-51 Mustang. The uh, Rough Rider is technically tied to Teddy, so if they ever bring in another uh, leader for America, then you would only have the P-51 Mustang in that case, unless that leader also came with a unique unit. So their, their actual unique unit is the P-51 Mustang. It replaces the fighter and no longer needs aluminum. It has 85 combat and range strength versus the 80 for the fighter. It also has 6 movement versus the 4 for the fighter. It gains plus 5 attack against fighter aircraft. So it's already going to be a stronger fighter, and then it's going to be even stronger going against other fighters. So it's really going to be able to take control of the skies in, in a big way. It can also gain 50% experience, which if you really focus on leveling up to maybe the strafe, 
um, for like attacking non-cavalry units and tank buster for attacking cavalry units, you can really protect against those land units better. Or you can also go up the intercept route if you're going to be facing a bunch of bombers. Uh, it's good for what it does, which is defend your own land. I personally would prefer the B-17 from Civ 5, but this is still a really, really good unit. The overall scores for this unit, I would say, would be a 7 for Domination. Uh, it's not like an amazing unit, but, you know, if you get it leveled up, you could help yourself with either going against other fighters, going against other bombers, or even going against some of the land units, you know, as a forward kind of attacking range unit, if you will. Uh, so it's not terrible. America's unique infrastructure is the film studio building. It replaces the broadcast center and is otherwise identical to it, except for the fact that it gives you a plus 100% tourism from any city versus other civilizations that are in the modern era. So they effectively double the tourism against other civilizations in the modern era. Well, when you get this, you're going to be in the modern era already anyway. So more often than not, it's just going to automatically go right into that double tourism and really ramp up your late game tourism bonuses and shoot you towards that culture of victory. Overall scores for this, I mean, domination, science, religion, this doesn't help any of those. It's really just a flat 10 on the culture, though. I mean, this is about the best uh, boost you could possibly get going towards a culture of victory. For strategy for America, if you're playing as them, you're going to want to expand and fill out your home continent quickly in the early game. You may not have early unique units, but the plus five bonus will really make a difference. Avoid expanding past your home continent, however, there's just no real point. Uh, I would even take out city states on your home continent, especially if they have a good place for a national park or seaside resorts. Once you've expanded as far as you can, settle in and protect yourself until the late game. Maybe save a city state or other enemy to farm with your Rough Riders for extra culture. I would say you can go for the Classic Republic in the early game to really start pumping out great people, go for Merchant Republic in the mid game for those extra trade routes, and three wildcard slots for even more great people points, and in the late game go for Democracy to clean up any late cultural great people and really push for the win. If you're playing against America, take note that Theodore Roosevelt's leader agenda is big stick policy. Basically, if you put a city on his home continent and stay peaceful with him, he's going to like you a whole lot. Otherwise, take him out in the early game and just know he's going to be stronger than you when he's at home. Victory condition for America is pretty obvious. Culture. America was made for a culture victory and they're one of the best at it. They get double tourism against modern era civs. They get extra appeal with their parks. They get extra wild card slots and even a bit of culture from the Rough Riders. Where does America rank? Their overall scores, if I take an average of all their bonuses, I'd give their domination about a 6. If there's enough civilizations on your home continent, sure, go for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother. Science, I'm going to give them a 2. Just, just don't. Their wildcard bonuses are just not enough. Culture, I'm going to give them a 9. The average of their scores is about an 8, but I'm going to give a plus 1 bonus point for the extra appeal, wildcard, and 100% tourism bonuses they get. Just the cohesion there is just too good. And then for religion, again, it's another 2. Just, just don't. Again, the wildcard bonus is just not enough. What are your thoughts about America? Did I get it right? Did I miss something? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, please give me a thumbs up if you do like this video and want to see more of these. I do plan to keep these going. Uh, next up would be Arabia. So I do appreciate you watching and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye.